A Sunset Longing by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo A Sunset Longing To F. S. H. What meaneth this unrest within my heart? And why do I sit here alone and sigh? The sunset throws its garnished doors apart, And palace halls are opened in the sky. I gaze upon the gold strewn in the west, A miser of his jewels dispossessed. I have played in the sunset's crimson rain, And felt its saffron torch wave o'er my brow, That heated to excess my maddened brain, And threw a halo round my heart, but now, like some poor bird far from its kindred sky i look into the sunset look and sigh i have no friend to lean upon my heart ah how i miss the pressure of thy hand and thy dear voice seems of the past a part thy figure like a shade from shadow land i think i would be happy if you came and touched my hand or softly called my name if i could look into your face tonight and search the deep minds of your pensive eyes sure i would find there a responsive light to dissipate from out my heart the sighs and then i know my lips would lose their scorn and in my soul a new impulse be born if we could wander off far from the crowd among the hills our voices there unheard, where once our hearts in unison beat loud to the sweet song of some wild mountain bird. I think the twilight veil would lose its gloom that shrouds tonight the windows of my room. Perhaps tis wrong that I should sadden you with these rain droppings that my heart clouds shed. Gladly would I distill a drop of dew down deep into your flower-like heart instead some other night of separation sky should clearer grow dear absent one i'll try end of poem this recording is in the public domain journeys by kate slaughter mckinney read for LibriVox.org by nemo journeys Oh, the many, many journeys I have taken in a day. Journeys short and journeys long, journeys right and journeys wrong, often pausing on the way. Themes so grand my thoughts delay, themes suggesting instant song. Lofty good scarce understood, dying ere I knew their worth, as an infant dies at birth. Oh, the melancholy journeys that on earth my eyes have seen over cemeteries vast like a spirit i have passed where the helmet and canteen cankered near a gravestone lean where the warrior's sword was cast and the mould so shallow rolled that the eagle from on high dropped his penetrating eye oh the mad exciting journey floating down the sunset's tide where there is no sign of sail, neither any promised gale, flames about on every side, every hope for me denied. Even the clouds I cannot hail, as they drift their cinder sift on the water where they float, like a freighted burning boat. Oh, the sweet yet lonesome journey that I always take alone, back into the vanished past where the sunshine runneth fast, there the rose is open blown there i hear a loving tone there no twilight shades are cast but complete and very sweet is the dawn when like a child love looked in my heart and smiled oh the happy happy journey with my loved one near my side open stands the prison room we forget its chilly tomb over fields of grain we glide over rivers broad we ride, drinking up the earth's perfume, like a thought the muses taught. Onward o'er the world we fly, like twin clouds born of the sky. 
Oh, the swift, inspiring journey, far away in unknown space, where my castles stand complete and the gardens full and sweet, where the moonlight weaves its lace, and a friend's is every face. In this land, need I repeat, is of dreams, here crystal streams, lose their way as from the throne, in this country all my own. Oh, the elevating journey, toward the zenith now I bend, far above the mundane sphere, stars like mighty worlds appear, losing sight of home and friends, higher still the path ascends, heaven is dawning very near, but I pause, alas, because, to a mortal such as I, heaven an entrance must deny. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lost Poem by Kate Slaughter McKinney, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Long ago, beside my window, with an open manuscript, I sat looking on a forest that with gold and brown was tipped, heeding nothing save the sighing of my own heart and the trees when into the open lattice like a whisper came the breeze lingered at my lips a moment past my temple then it crept and from out of my listless fingers an unfinished poem swept stop i cried into a footman that was passing on the street i will give you thirty shillings if you'll bring me back that sheet but he gazed into the heavens as he would upon a kite and i watched it sally upward fading faster from my sight then I said unto a swallow that flew by on rapid wing, Open wide I'll throw the granary, if my poem back you'll bring. But he only flew the faster, and was soon beyond my sight, and the daylight vanished from me, and to mock me sent the night. Oh, there's not can daunt a spirit when the inner heart's afire, and the darkness sent upon me only did my aim inspire. So I sought an humble dwelling, to a fortune-teller went, and I tarried with the gypsy till the night was almost spent. But I left her door disheartened, for she only said to me, Take this, search, and when you found it, send or fetch again the key. But, I said, tis lost in nature, in the sky or hills among and the key back in her shanty with an angry word i flung for prophetic seemed her language and my purposes were mocked if henceforth the heart of nature fate against my own had locked take it search again she muttered as i started to depart and be careful how you use it for it fits the human heart in her hand i dropped a coin and before the eye of day peeped out from the morning's cradle, I was far upon my way, like the breath of early roses, like the whisper of a bird. From a little maiden passing a sweet laugh, methought I heard. She has found it, I repeated. There's no use for any key, said the pretty little damsel. My heart's open, don't you see? Yes, I saw, and there were treasures such as kings would love to own who would sacrifice to gain them e'en a jeweled crown and throne buds and blossoms song and laughter humming birds and butterflies singing brooks and sparkling fountains there and peaceful were the skies but the poem it was missing so i journeyed slow along till i heard a mother singing to her babe a cradle song and i tried to get permission in her heart to fit the key but the lullaby continued do not interrupt said she next i hailed a youth that passed me and his face was wondrous fair and i searched long through his heart's book but the poem was not there it is lost i cried with sorrow as despair held out her cup and i quaffed the bitter liquid and the idle search gave up years have passed and just this morning i was called beside a bed where the sheet lay still and sober over an old lover spread 
sad and pallid were his features clever too death's new disguise but i read the old old secret even in his half-closed eyes then a thought the key i whispered lest i should be overheard and i sought the heart unlocked it found my poem every word oft revised it was and polished wore the features too of fame and i read with strange emotion just below inscribed my name oh it was a trying moment if the poem i should claim i could mount upon the ladder to the topmost round of fame but my evil spirit yielded for i could not rob the dead so i locked the sacred prison and above it bowed my head rather would i find engraven in a steadfast heart my name than in shining words enroll it high upon the tower of fame in the poem this recording is in the public domain a maple leaf by kate slaughter mckinney read for LibriVox.org by nemo a maple leaf to mbs glancing o'er a childish volume where sweet thoughts like blossoms lay there between two oft-read pages a pressed wreath i found to-day goldenrod and aster flowers lay with bloom all crushed and dead but a maple leaf among them still retained its gold and red in my hand i took the treasure held it up before my face, and the sunlight, then declining, solved its geometric grace. Many a road and by-path meeting proved the interwoven veins, and a forest rose before me, flaming like my window-panes. As a vision that is pictured by an angel in the night, soon a figure, sometime vanished, rose to my exultant sight like a goddess of enchantment there she stood beneath the trees and her face was like a lily and her eyes like summer seas then i thought for me she's waiting so i glanced off to the right for i feared it all a fancy but i found my home in sight heard the town clock slowly striking and the same familiar bells saw the courthouse and the churches and the summit where she dwells so i then no longer doubted down a meadow path i strolled leading off into the woodland that had stole the sunset's gold overhead the birds were flying but a black winged happy throng paused for we had been old comrades and they sang a farewell song but the thoughts that followed after though the birds away had flown were so happy for she met me linked her arm within my own up and down the path we wandered gathering leaves and grasses gray until darkness drove the twilight o'er the hill where fled the day darkness and her face had vanished all alone i seemed to stand but i heard her step departing and i grasped again her hand held it tight and tighter pressing in a happy strange belief till i woke and found that dreaming i had crushed my treasured leaf and a poem this recording is in the public domain a gallop with santa claus by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org i was thinking last night of the children far away in a home that i know of the dear little girls at the window and the boys out at play in the snow of the stockings hung up at the chimney of the little hearts hopeful and glad and thus i kept thinking and thinking until i grew homesick and sad so i turned my eyes out on the landscape as my thoughts were unwilling to go and i saw round the curve of a hillock three ponies come white as the snow a sleigh next appeared and a driver 
oh my heart beat so fast then because as he drew up the reins at the doorstep i found it was old santa claus such shaking of hands and such greetings i fear i shall never more see for every big doll in his wagon was looking and laughing at me no minutes to lose said old santa i've hundreds of miles yet to go will you please to partake of my journey and gallop with me o'er the snow no sooner than said i was seated all round me he folded the fur he made a loose rein for the ponies and urged them with whip and with spur away and away o'er the country we flew like the glances of light down streets that were blazing with bonfires on on through the snow and the night then all of a sudden he halted in front of a house old and dark there was no friendly ray at the window and on the hearthstone not a spark but he entered and by a dim lantern that swung from his new scarlet cap i saw the sad face of a woman asleep and a babe on her lap and two pretty faces beside her a pillow of straw almost hid but the little hands looked as if frozen that lay on the patched covered lid a snow cloud had sifted its samples of eiderdown over their feet and a star looking in through the shingles was spreading o'er them a bright sheet old santa had lost not a moment a cedar tree suddenly sprung into life just in front of the children with popcorn and bright ribbons strung some tiny wax candles were lighted to chase off the thoughts of the night and the dollies had met in the treetop to dance in their dresses of white a kite that could climb into cloudland hung low and a new picture book a street car wound up for its journey and a little boat built for the brook oh all kinds of candy he left them that ever i tasted or you and under the tree there were apples and peanuts a bucket or two he built them a fire and dresses were left made of flannel so warm and with many nice greetings and wishes we galloped away through the storm away and away sped the ponies so fast that none could o'ertake so fast it was told me this morning we looked like a winged snowflake but soon at a homestead we halted old santa said i must alight to see if the children were sleeping and leave them whatever was right so i crept to the casement it opened and i saw what i ne'er shall forget those darlings there slumbering sweetly the thoughts of the nightfall had met we gave them all kinds of nice presents what they were it is useless to say for they found them and now are rejoicing and happy this glad holiday so children be kind to each other be gentle and loving because i may be invited next christmas to gallop with old santa claus end of poem this recording is in the public domain home memories by kate slaughter mckinney read for LibriVox .org. i am thinking of a cottage where the roses used to bloom how they talked beside the pavement in low whispers of perfume or climbed up beside the window to look in my little room i am thinking of the doorway where the vine i used to train that snowed down its flaky petals with a pleasant summer rain where i used to sit and listen to the old mill's low refrain i'm thinking of the sunflower too that towered above the gate of the friends who called me hither when the day was cool and late ah those hours seem so distant and the year an ancient date i am thinking of the grapevine where the crippled robin fed how he lingered there each morning till fresh crumbs for him were spread is he feeding there this summer from a stranger's hand instead i am thinking of the children who crept to the little yard begging me to grant permission that they play upon the sward could i bar them from the entry thus might heaven me discard i am thinking of a morning that wrung from my heart a sigh when i kissed warm lips that trembled with a tear-drop in my eye while i closed our cottage windows and pronounced the word good-bye 
This recording is in the public domain. Sunshine and Shadow by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org I passed a pretty cottage place. A rose looked from the door and smiled so sweetly in my face I paused the house before. The honeysuckle from the wall threw down a welcome tear. The breeze came rushing through the hall and whispered, Tarry here, for all within is peace and love. So through the curtain's lace I glanced the reckless words to prove and saw a lover's face bent close above two eyes of blue. Why should I dim their day? Across the pane the blind I drew and softly crept away. I went again one summer eve, the rose blushed at the door, but smiled as sweetly to receive me as it did before. The breeze came out as joyously and lingered at my side and murmured, tarry now and see our happy groom and bride. Oh no, I said, some other day I'll call the pair to see. But as I turned to go away, they both looked out at me oh what a light of hope and love their features then o'erspread and a shekinah from above seemed on the cottage shed years crept away when next i came before that open door a little child pronounced my name that golden tresses wore will you come in she gladly cried and opened wide the gate my little one i slow replied the day is low and late Tomorrow, when the sun is bright, I'll come and play with you. Too chilly now, the falling night, too damp the evening dew. And so I did. I often trod along the side yard there, and found that fresher grew the sod, the sky more bright and fair. I once had said that every rose held just a briar or two, and every river as it flows a dark wave with the blue. But twas not thus I found it here, the world that night I'd tell, that I had found a sky so clear that raindrops never fell. Thus musing on that sweet child's face, that night I could not sleep. A shadow seemed the light to chase as storms the ocean sweep. And when the stars forsook the sky and birds their matins sang, I strolled again the cottage by and loud the doorbell rang the rose had dropped its leaves and died i heard within a sob what did it mean the winds replied crape hangs upon the knob softly i raised the window's lace the little child was dead i threw a flower across her face and from the cottage fled i never will go back again or push the blinds apart i sought a sunshine for my pen found shadows for my heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain only a fern leaf by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org by eva davis only a fern leaf to h m only a fern leaf darling yellow and dry with age only a date recorded down at the ending page only a breath from the mountain a song with the summer wed only the voice of a fountain only a dream that is dead only a faded morning with the shadow falling through only a hint of warning a cloud in the far-off blue only a word of parting under a starlit sky only a tear that is starting a long and a last good-bye only a face of sorrow turned to a vanished year only a fern leaf darling glued to the pages here end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Dream by Kate Slaughter McKinney, 
Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. A Dream to My Father Listen, Father, while I tell you of a dream I had last night, for it was so sweet my childhood home was painted in my sight. T'was the same old frame house, Father, hidden by the same old trees, apple, cherry, quince, and locust, talking in the same old breeze. On the walk I found the cowslip stolen from the old ravine, and the bluebell and the columbine, how near my heart they lean. Roses, red as any furnace flame, about me seemed to grow. Roses pink as maiden blushes, roses pure and white as snow. All around the yard I wandered, oh, so long I cannot tell. Then I paused beneath the apple tree and drank from the old well. Through my veins I felt the water coursing like a happy thought, and a thousand recollections to my memory then it brought. Recollections rushing to me swifter than an angel's wing, Recollection slipping from me as a pearl slips from a string. Recollections that transfigured me into a little child, and the halo shed around me was my father's happy smile. It was such a pretty picture, fancy held before my view. I will turn the magic lantern so that you may see it too. It is springtime, and the sugar trees have pitched their shady tent. Tiny leaves like tiny parasols reach toward the firmament. Restless swings a childish figure to and fro upon the gate. Someone's coming down the highway, tis for him she there doth wait. Ah, you recognize the picture. I can tell it by your smile. You have recognized the sugar trees and recognized your child. Through the pasture now we're strolling, looking down the avenue. See you not another picture? Yes, the figures there are too. Mother sits upon the portico, her knitting in her hand, and my brother talks beside her of that wild and western land, where he raced his Indian ponies and lassoed the buffaloes. Oh, it is a perfect wonderland, this country that he knows. But we will not interrupt them, for they do so happy seem. So we turn aside and leave them, wandering on as in a dream. Then I led you up the hillside, and we sat upon the mound. Oh, there never was before or since so pretty of you spread round. Just below the tranquil water of the clear pond seemed to win every cloud that floated over, and the heavens lay within. Then the meadow, where the clover bloomed, and where you stacked the hay, like a field within a picture book, before us there it lay. Then beyond, the barn and orchard, and the valley that I love, oh, it all seemed like a painting, let down by the hand above. But a thought came rushing to me, of a fairy that you know, for she lived there in the valley, and her name it was Echo. So I laughed and called unto her, just as loud as I could call. But the voice that she threw back to me was not a child's at all. No, it was a woman's voice. I awoke then with a start, and I found the king beside me that dethroned you in my heart. Then a tear fell on the pillow, not a briny bitter tear. Why, you ask? Because the dream was gone that I have copied here. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Those Soft Airs She Played by Kate Slaughter McKinney. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Those Soft Airs She Played to MBS. Those soft airs she played, through my memory they glide, like a cloud shadow crossing the plain. The sun follows often the wind at his side, then a whisper that never the roses denied, and a sound like a light fall of rain. Grander music she plays, music weird and sublime, 
thunder toned like the sound of the sea that rolleth away like the surges of time but to quicken my thoughts and to sweeten my rhyme she always played soft airs for me faint whispers that blend with a deep forest sound from which a wild fawn would not flee and sweet is the brook that the summer has found when singing its song soft and glad underground and carrying its heart to the sea a movement then mingles like those that are heard when the trees toss their shade to the eaves a pause and a tremble as of a sweet word or the dream-haunted wing of a night-hidden bird that is shaking the dew from the leaves then silence that even a word would profane silence holding some thoughts heaven-born that only her fingers a moment can chain up up to the skies they have wandered again like a prayer wholly spoken at morn though soft ere she played in the dim lighted room with her heart in the past far away ah what would i give if to-night through the gloom along with the budding and bursting of bloom they now past my window would stray alas vain the thought and as vain sounds the sigh long distance my wish has delayed but we sit in the twilight my memory and i and listen and linger we scarcely know why unless for those soft airs she played and a poem this recording is in the public domain To Albert by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo To Albert Thou art going from us, Albert, Going far away from me, Where I cannot hear thy prattle, And thy face I cannot see. Back into the southern country, Thou art going there to roam, where my heart began its singing in the old Kentucky home. Lonely all the days will linger when I miss your little face. Shadows gray from out the hours all the sunbeams soon will chase. Dim will seem the sunny window where the pansy blossoms grows, and no restless little fingers will disturb the opening rose. Soon the playthings will be missing, soon they gathered up must be thou art going from us albert going far away from me soon the little boy that vexed me when i tried to read and write will be gone no one will listen when i sing my songs at night soon the halls will lose their echo and the yard grow silent too and the pretty face will vanish with those wondrous eyes of blue. So goodbye, my little darling. All these tears have been for thee. Thou art going from us, Albert, going far away from me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Reunion of the Flowers by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Reunion of the Flowers A few of the springtime flowers and the summer blossoms sweet agreed at the early autumn in a locust grove to meet and there to hold communion by the light of the setting sun and each relate or mention some kind act they had done and he whose deed was noblest should at the close of day be colonel of the regiment and lead the ranks away so one by one i watched them assemble where the trees had lowered their limbs to listen and halted every breeze a rose in the richest satin with a bud to her bonnet tied was first to break the silence that reigned on every side I lived with a lovely lady in a handsome house of brick, and went with her each morning to wait upon the sick. 
I've leaned beside the pillows where wounded soldiers lay, and I wept at the funeral service of an orphan child today. I bloomed in a humble garden where an old man used to look, said the jonquil ere the snowdrift, his window sill forsook. A poor bee shivered homeward one night, the tulip said, fell through my scarlet curtains and died upon my bed. I looked in at a window and made two lovers kiss. The pansy owned and laughing, said it was not amiss. I went into a palace, the lily then replied, and held the veil that evening of a happy-hearted bride. I sweetened the room of a poet, and o'er his coffin wept. The heliotrope low whispered, and back in the shadows crept. Oh, that was very noble, exclaimed the goldenrod. I tried to gather the sunshine, and hold it up to God. To make the world less sober, to make the heart less sad, was all the mission, brethren, your humble servant had. In the ranks of that floral army that marched at the close of day, that sunny featured blossom was the one that led the way. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Children of the Brain by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org Our thoughts, the children of the brain, are born for us some good to gain and if we rear them just and right they'll seek the day instead of night long in the harvest field they'll work brave laborers that do not shirk and they will reap just what we sow as written you will find below i sent them forth into the world some thoughts that long my heart impearled their countenance was of a light that beamed upon me through the night the features were like mine perchance with part of heaven hid in the glance and the apparel that they wore my fingers long had labored o'er a vine ran through the tunic's hem that wilted not though broke the stem and all the undergarments showed the time and care on them bestowed some of the moonbeams took a place within the frill about the face and stars that bright as lyra glowed the overdress and mantle showed the sandals that encased the feet were fashioned for a journey fleet and pinions like a sail unfurled i saw outspread before the world with promises to come again and glorify the parent pen i tore apart the silken skein and let them drift from out my brain where are they tarrying to-night i see around a fireside bright one looking in a friendly face how tender seems the warm embrace now close close to this loved one's lip tis held and for companionship is nestling down into the heart and of the same becomes a part some beckon me across the seas are favored by a foreign breeze are travelling where i cannot go are learning what i ne'er shall know are praised perhaps with offered funds while with them glad the newsboy runs are welcomed in some palace home and ne'er allowed henceforth to roam the one that i had loved the best a journey took into the west and by a friend it chanced to meet sent home a prairie flower sweet two stronger ones the north that sought some words of love back home have brought they brighten up the lonesome hearth and praise the pen that gave them birth and one crept down in cupid's coat to read a dainty perfumed note and afterward came back to tell how sweetly rang the wedding bell another with as brave a face had with a rival run a race it did its best to gain had tried but came back home alas and died the tenderest one perhaps of all upon a critic chanced to call he hooted at the homespun gown and bent his bitter blackest frown upon the waif and read its fate where winter winds could congregate i thought i heard its funeral bell but where the grave is i'll not tell 
i do not know the other's fate a pauper's grave may them await the fabric that my hands embossed while fancy figured high the cost may trail to-night some filthy street where sin and shame together meet and the love strains from my heart's lyre be sung around an outcast's fire they may attain a higher sphere where flows the penitential tear and point the wanderers they find upon the paths that heavenward wind god grant their mission may be such that all sad hearts they'll lightly touch and spread upon the ugly wound a balm to make them whole and sound end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Lily of the Valley by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Pat Mathewson England, 2017 Just a breath of fragrance on the breeze, alas A lily of the valley dying in the grass Just a recollection followed with a sigh Just a teardrop dripping down the cheek and wide May the 16th, 1887 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines to the Old Year by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis Lines to the Old Year Farewell, Old Year, the shades are growing deep. Thou art dethroned and vanishes your power. I sit alone with folded hands and weep, While close the minutes chase our parting hour. Your lips are dumb, and with a feeble hand You turn the pages of the year's great book, While my wet cheeks are with an odor fanned, Like that the summer breeze from violets shook. I gaze into the volume, undiscerned Some scenes advance, like phantoms hurry by. And thoughts look from the leaves now swifter turned, As meaningless as would a stranger's eye. I meet familiar names in death's long list, I pass new graves where tears have thawed the snows, I search my heart lest something I have missed, But in its garden find no dying rose. Thou hast been kind to me, no marble urn Chills the warm pulses of my heart to-night. And from the thought my pen doth gladly turn To offer homage ere you take your flight. Bright recollections thou hast left instead That twinkle in the firmament of thought. And lover-like I sit and gaze o'erhead Upon the starry gems thy hand hath wrought. Far down the bypath of a summer dream Glad voices call and fingers beckon me an oar dips music from a moonlit stream, Where in thy prime I sailed, old year, with thee. And now, e'en in the shadow of thy hearse, Ungarland save with faded mistletoe, While midnight fiends, the hours call like a curse, You clasp my hand, and smiling on me, go. Farewell, a friend thou spend to me, and I shall wander through the burial ground of years, and often with an introspective eye search out thy grave and water it with tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Why I Smile by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org I smile because the world is fair, because the sky is blue, because I find, no matter where I go, a friend that's true. I smile because the earth is green, the sun is so near and bright, because the days that o'er us lean are full of warmth and light. I smile as past the yards I go, though strange and new the place, the violets seem my step to know and look up in my face. I smile to hear the robin's note, he comes so newly dressed, a love song throbbing in his throat, a rose pinned on his breast. 
and so the truth I'll not disown, because the spring is nigh. My heart has somewhat better grown, and I forget to sigh. Mount Vernon, Illinois End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Phantom Ships by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson I heard the plunging of the sea like a wild steed pursuing me, and dark and frothy was the main, but suddenly a checking rein seemed drawn, and panting on the shore I heard the billow's frightful roar. My dream betook a different hue, caught from the ocean's chainful blue, a door was opened to my heart from which i saw each fear depart and there from some far happy isle a sea breeze came as would a smile oh it was sweet to wander there the sky o'erhanging still and bare a cloud in some soft raiment dressed leaned like a bride upon the west the seagulls floated on the breeze like blossoms blown from april's trees the wind just kissed by summer's mouth walked like a lover from the south and jewels from a sunbeam's hand were sprinkled on the snowy sand the breakers ran along the beach and scattered shells within my reach i stooped and held one to my ear and listened as to voices dear and then methought far far away where purple mists may dim the sky i saw the motion of a ship that from the heavens seemed to slip on on it came with fluttering sail strong blew the steady ocean gale the waves were running thick and high and kept the ship close to the sky it seemed a picture on the sea a picture thought i can't it be but from the waves the wind withdrew and brought the sailors close to view the pilot pointed to the shore and then to gems and shining ore piled up against the good ship's side that leaned so brave upon the tide oh there were silks of colours soft and plumes that proudly waved aloft and there were jewels bags of gold from caves o'er which the water rolled the coral crowns gift of the sea and all of this for whom for me with open arms to meet the ship i ran and proudly curled my lip no one would know from whence it came and none should share my wealth and fame my gowns of silk with me should roam my gold i closet at my home ah me i knew not what i thought the ship was by a whirlwind caught it staggered out upon the sea i heard the sailors cursing me a flash fell from the lowering night and down the brave ship sank from sight i walk again upon the sands with aching heart and empty hands sometimes a piece of broken mast upon the tide goes sailing past and where the sun so friendly shone a shadow on the sand has grown a strange and half-distracted dream comes just behind the seagull's scream the sinking ship again i see the sailors hurl their oaths at me and like an echo from the grave is the song of wind and wave but somewhere under bluer skies another ship in harbor lies its flags are flying free and fast the sails are white and strong the mast tis loaded too with precious freight and for the same i stand and wait when it comes home i'll happy be and all share my joys with me my wines at other feasts i'll pour the sorrowful shall smile yea more the poor shall not be turned away and one and all shall bless the day pablo beach florida january eighteen eighty seven end of poem this recording is in the public domain the weight of a word by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox.org by larry wilson 
have you ever thought of the weight of a word that falls in the heart like the song of a bird that gladdens the springtime of memory and youth and garlands with cedar the banner of truth that moistens the harvesting spot of the brain like dewdrops that fall on the meadow of grain or that shrivels the germ and destroys the fruit and lies like a worm at the lifeless root i saw a farmer at break of day hoeing his corn in a careful way an enemy came with a drouth in his eye discouraged the worker and hurried by the keen-edged blade of the faithful hole dulled on the earth in the long corn row the weeds sprung up and their feathers tossed over the field and the crop was lost a sailor launched on an angry bay when the heavens entombed the face of day the wind arose like a beast in pain and shook on the billows his yellow name the storm beat down as if cursed the cloud and the waves held up a dripping shroud and hark o'er the waters that wildly raved came a word of cheer and he was saved a poet passed with a song of god hid in his heart like a gem in a clod his lips were framed to pronounce the thought and the music of rhythm its magic wrought feeble at first was the happy trill low was the echo that answered the hill but a jealous friend spoke near his side and on his lips the sweet song died a woman paused where a chandelier threw in the darkness its poisoned spear weary and footsore from journeying long she had strayed unawares from the right to the wrong angels were beckoning her back from the den hell and its demons were beckoning her in the tone of an urchin like one who forgives drew her back and in heaven that sweet word lives words words they are little yet mighty and brave they rescue a nation an empire save they close up the gaps in a fresh bleeding heart that sickness and sorrow have severed apart they fall on the path like a ray of sun where the shadows of death lay so heavy upon they lighten the earth over the blessed dead a word that will comfort oh leave not unsaid in the poem this recording is in the public domain an apology by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org by eva davis an apology to j d n my pen is mournful you ask why when all the time my face is glad and though contentment lights my eye you say my verse is strangely sad so serious that e'en the strain you can detect as on the pain you know the patter in the night although the cloud is hid from sight you asked me once to change my tone to trim my pen for gayer verse and laughing said twas like a moan that followed close behind a hearse my muse was saddened at the stroke and in my heart new chords awoke chords that vibrate like the bell that tolled one day a funeral knell i would not have them otherwise i claim my caged bird's song more sweet because tis sad than one which tries the echo merrier to repeat how quickly i would turn aside and soon forget a boisterous tide to hear the brooklet sad and low sing in a minor key i know i'll not attempt hood's humorous style i do not crave john gilpin's ride it was my custom when a child to linger at my mother's side when she would sing the old churchyard that told how soft and green it sward the angels that watched round the tomb crept as she sang into our room to said the clown will never jest when folded is the showman's tent that she who pathos renders best has loudest laugh in merriment thus vice versa is the theme or all things are not what they seem sadness to joy is as a twin 
one rules without one rules within my life is full of love and joy my heart-strings though with sadness tuned then do not ask me to destroy the mournful measures it would wound my muse the playmate of my youth who taught me early many a truth from others woes and bid me think while she supplied the pen and ink end of poem this recording is in the public domain speak kindly by kate slaughter mckinney read for LibriVox .org. speak kindly in the morning when you are leaving home and give the day a lighter heart into the week to roam leave kind words as mementos to be handled and caressed and watch the noontime hour arrive in gold and tinsel dressed speak kindly in the evening when on the walk is heard a tired footstep that you know speak one refreshing word and see the glad light springing from the heart into the eye as sometimes from behind a cloud a star leaps to the sky speak kindly to the children that crowd around your chair the tender lips that lean on yours kiss smooth the flaxen hair some day a room that's lonesome the little ones may own and home be empty as the nest from which the birds have flown speak kindly to the stranger who passes through the town a loving word is light of weight not so would prove a frown one is a precious jewel the heart would grasp in sleep the other like a demon's gift the memory loathes to keep speak kindly to the sorrowful who stand beside the dead the heart can lean against a word though thorny seems the bed and oh to those discouraged who faint upon the way stop stop if just a moment and something kindly say speak kindly to the fallen ones your voice may help them rise a word right spoken oft unclasps the gate beyond the skies speak kindly and the future you'll find god looking through speak of another as you'd have him always speak of you end of poem this recording is in the public domain those willing hands by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox org by nemo those willing hands in memory of miss fanny stevens those willing hands they're still tonight the life has from them fled they're folded from the longing sight so cold and pale and dead the busy veins have idle grown like a long famished rill that once in such an eager tone called soft from hill to hill dear hands i felt their pressure oft in a sad time gone by they moved about the years as soft as clouds move through the sky they screened the rainstorm from my heart and let the moonlight in and showed while shadows fell athwart tracks where the sun had been they were such willing willing hands they stilled the mournful tear unwound the pattern of god's plans and made his problems clear they did not reach to high-grown bowers where rarest blossoms bloom but called the blessed purer flowers and bore them to the tomb poor hands they are so still and white the rose that shared their rest is shrinking from the long dark night and falling on her breast the wreath is wilted on the mound where long the sunshine stands but angels have the sleeper found and clasped those willing hands and a poem this recording is in the public domain look into the past by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox org by nemo look into the past 
Look into the past, there are pictures, detaining the sunshine of May. All a-quiver with light, they turn to the sight, like a flower that faces the day. How restful the hillsides and shady, the brook like a song passeth by. And the trespassing moon floats about through noon, like a bubble blown up in the sky. Look into the past, it is happy. Its voices are voices of youth. There is no idle jest to disturb the heart's rest, and its banners were mottoes of truth. Look back at the glad, happy faces that walk with our childhood abreast, and show me today, though it be miles away, a spot that can offer such rest. Say not that the years long escaping show graves of a cankering joy. Because we have found that new pleasures abound, must we cast off our first childish toy? Because some old love has disturbed us, and filled a lost hour full of gloom, are we never to go when the sun lieth low, and stand by the neglected tomb? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Little Faith to C by Kate Slaughter McKinney read for LibriVox.org A little face to look at, a little face to kiss. Is there anything, I wonder, that's half so sweet as this? A little cheek to dimple when smiles begin to grow, a little mouth betraying which way the kisses go, a slender little ringlet, a rosy little air. A little chin to quiver when falls the little tear. A little face to look at, a little face to kiss. Is there anything, I wonder, that's half so sweet as this? A little hand so fragile all through the night to hold. Two little feet so tender to tuck in from the cold. Two eyes to watch the sunbeam that with the shadow plays. A darling little baby to kiss and love always end of poem this recording is in the public domain the canary and rose by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox dot org a lovely tea rose in a new autumn gown looked in at the window one day and said with a scorn tis a beautiful morn but ugly enough is your lay do you never grow weary of singing your songs shut up in that prison of brass i do not admire your out-of-tune lyre and none seem to listen who pass last night as i beaded my bodice with dew and shook the perfume from the lace there came to the fence such a beautiful prince and said looking into my face too lovely thou art to live here so obscure to-morrow with me thou shalt roam so he's coming to-day and will bear me away the queen of his heart and his home now the dear little songster was pruning her wing that had borrowed the sun's yellow ray and shaking a note in her quivering throat replied in an indifferent way my songs will not trouble you long I discern this breeze is forerunning a storm, and should he delay this prince on the way, you must seek other quarters more warm. Do you think, said the rose with a tremulous tone, the rain would disfigure my face? But e'en as she spoke, in the sky there awoke a wind that demolished the vase. With features all pale and distorted, she cried, still clinging up close to the glass. Cry for help! said the bird they will hear not a word for none seem to listen who pass there's a moral concealed in the little bird's throat that never her song will disclose but oft when the cloud for the sun makes a shroud she thinks of the beautiful rose who died with a coronet touching her brow crushed from sight by the hurrying throng and she smiles at a prince who yet leans on the fence and hears nothing else but her song end of poem this recording is in the public domain
A Sigh or a Tear by Kate Slaughter McKinney, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo and Eva Davis. A Sigh or a Tear A sigh or a tear is all you may fear as you watch the sweet-faced summer go and the throng of memories that you know. A sigh for the star that stood in the west now sinking down with the sun to rest for the smiles that live in an absent face like the blossoms of love in the heart's clear vase a, a sigh or a, or a tear, tear is, is all you may, you may fear. fear when you sit in the dusk with a new cigar and touch some chord on the old guitar a tear for the girl that was good and true for the songs of love the letters too and the ribbon round the roses tied that long ago in the drawer died a sigh or, or a tear is, is all, all you, you may fear. fear when you raise the lid to the little chest and find what a mother's heart loves best a broken toy a half-worn shoe some little dresses of pink and blue the blocks that builded such marvelous towers a golden curl and some withered flowers a, a sigh or, or a tear, tear is all you may fear when you gaze in the tomb of the dear dead past where the shadows of sunshine yet are cast a sigh for the rose though bleached and dried that close to the loved one lived and died for the voice that is still once dear to thee for the face that is gone ah me ah me a, a sigh or, or a tear, tear is all you may fear. fear end of poem this recording is in the public domain snowflakes by kate slaughter mckinney read for librivox.org by pat mathewson england 2017 see the early snowflakes softly they descend like an orchard blossom scattered by the wind here and there they're flying over all the trees high above them swarming like white-winged bees faster still they're whirling dancing into sight like a troop of fairies when the moon is light tripping down the highway in a reckless gait falling like a feather without sound or weight on the distant churchyard over graves unkempt where the leaves have drifted and the clouds have wept little band of angels doing only good making white the meadow and the lonely wood greeting with light kisses all they chance to meet leaving shining footprints all about the street little winter children full of life and fun oh i love the snowflakes love them every one end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Footprint by Kate Slaughter McKinney Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson A sweet song spoke to me one day Behind a prayer that passed my way Yet neither would for me delay The upward flight I searched and found a footprint Where the song had tarried But the prayer had left no trace On earth or air Straight from the heart it went to God The song remained to smooth the clod and lay a flower upon the sod o oh, envied right if but one song of mine could chase some sorrow from the heart and face i know in heaven twould find a place end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of katie did's poems by kate slaughter mckinney